The doctor's company study of nearly 1,200 claims over a period of years demonstrates that 39% of these claims are due to failure to diagnose. That means a failure in thinking. This is consistent with my own experience over a period of 45 years of practice, my own observations, and also prior medical literature, that failure to diagnose and cognitive failures results in a large number of claims. It should be no surprise that 39% of claims relate to failure to diagnose. One of the reasons is that there are 8,000 recognized diagnoses by the National Library of Medicine, but the average primary care physician only sees about 400 a year. That leaves a large number of rare diagnoses that will be seen only infrequently. In my medical group of over 400 doctors, we have addressed the issue of failure to diagnose by putting together seminars of about 20 physicians each. We have a lot of give and take in those discussions, and we talk about the underlying reasons for cognitive failure and methodological failure and why doctors don't come to the right diagnosis. And by doing so, we hope to improve patient safety and outcomes. In the seminars that we have in my group, we focus on issues called psychological biases. This affects many professions, not just medicine. Some examples of psychological biases are anchoring, which means focusing on one fact while ignoring others, premature closure, meaning coming to a diagnosis before you have enough data to really support the diagnosis, and also overconfidence. And by focusing on the potential for these landmines, we try to do a much better job in coming to the right diagnosis and improve patient safety. Let me give you an example of overconfidence bias. This was a middle-aged female presented to a primary care physician with symptoms suggesting gallbladder disease, and on evaluation, examination, laboratory testing, imaging studies, was found to have acute cholecystitis. This is an indication for admission to hospital and management as an inpatient. But in this case, the primary care physician did not recognize that need and failed to, to consult with up-to-date or a surgical colleague or other sources in order to better get a grasp on how to manage the patient. And the clinical outcome was not as good as it might have been had that doctor done so. I like to think of methods of improving diagnostic accuracy as compared to the patient safety movement, where we focus on systems improvement. In the case of cognitive skills, focusing on Psychological biases, for example, may really help improve coming to the correct diagnosis promptly and improving patient outcomes.